made our home. Our drove is flat inside. There's no twists. There's no knots. We have a flat drove coming out the bottom. Can everybody see this? Can we spread the strip off so everybody can see it? Front row drive. Down in front. And guys, if anybody wants to see this again after we're done in the hallway so we don't mess up the next presenter, I will do this again in the hallway. There's carpet up there, easy, easy enough to do. So here we are, uh, folded. We bring the fold back. And again, I have the privilege of time here. Not much, but I have the privilege of time. I'm not on a 20 minute call, so I'm not rushing through this. And I understand that when we are in a rush, we tend to do things quickly and uh, it may not always be this perfect. Flat S-fold, bridle. This S-folding is what allows it to pay out so cleanly in the video demonstrations we saw up there. Now, based on the length of the bridle, as you're doing your S-folds, eventually you're going to arrive at a point where the upper and lower attachments come together. So, the last fold this S-fold can be cheated, if you guys know what that means, it doesn't have to be a perfect length S-fold, it doesn't have to go as far, but the last fold should end with the type four, uh, excuse me, with the uh, box stitches on both sides of the, uh, the four point stitch here, the upper and lower attachment. The last line of the stitching point should be at the edge of the fabric. The reason for that is it allows for the attachment point, the slinks that hold the upper and lower together to lay as flat as possible in the pack tray. When you have monkey fists, when you have the balling up of the drogue, it's usually because this point has been folded over itself inside the pack job, which increases the depth of the pack job. So that last fold can be cheated just enough so that it ends up, if I try to do this here, I don't have enough drogue fold left to get it uh, perfectly flat, so I just, Tom, quick yes. question. Are you making mark uh, there so you have less of a reference every time you fold it? I'm not sure I understand the question. Like mark the drogue bridle? Yes. Well, the, the box stitch. No, that's yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, that's and yes and no. The reason why I wouldn't do that is that these folds are never going to be exactly the same length. It might be a little bit shorter because if someone's in a rush. Right. As long as so you'll never arrive at that exact same point. But it is a good a good question. Okay. So now we have a flat drogue bridle. Okay, repeat after me. Left, right, left, right, one third. Left, left, right, left, right, 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 Okay, start with the left. This is critical. We start with the left, and we're only going one third of the way. Go to the right, one third. Go to the left, one third. And we go back to the right, one third. So, in starting this, I said it was no coincidence that the width of the type 4 tape is the width of the pocket. It is no coincidence but that the fold, the length of the drogue, is now the length of the pocket. And there is nothing inside here that is balled up, it is flat, and it is smooth. So we're almost home. We've done all this great work, but we can undo it all in an instant. We can screw it all up by taking the drogue bridle and placing it in the drogue pocket incorrectly. The correct orientation is opening or fold like a hot dog bun, facing the back of the container. The reason those drogue sets that you saw stayed held shut during the drogue set was because the orientation was towards the back of the container. As I set the drogue, the relative wind has to, logical outcome, hold this together. The wind is coming on this side and the wind is passing on that side. So as this pays out, the relative wind is doing my job for me. It's holding the drogue fold together. If I were to take this correct drogue fold, place it upside down in the pocket, and now pull it off my hip. What has to happen here before it even finishes leaving my pocket? Open. The relative wind's gonna blow it open, mushroom, and then it's gonna <laughs> flop on my back. So this is the most critical part of that. We then take the flat drogue fold. Turn it sideways. Place that nice folded flat drogue in the pocket. Stow any excess here. And you'll see now that the tight four tape is at the edge of the pocket, which also makes a nice handle if your golf ball falls off. Everything is flat and protected. There's one highly technical rigging concept process called applied violence. We probably have this in a manual somewhere. Give it a little bit of a flat pack. 
flatten out anything in there, a little apply violence, not, nothing hard, nothing drastic, just flattening, flattening out any uh, issues in there. And now this will move easy and cleanly in and out of the pocket, yet remain firmly seated during the exit and drogue setting process. That is a correctly folded drogue. If you do that every single time and follow the pin, see here, there's, there's no, no priming necessary. That should be the, the Facebook or YouTube post. No priming necessary when it's done correctly.